Good afternoon. Good morning. I'm Shane O'Brien. I'm Claudia Galindo. Uh, and we're here at Four Bricks uh, in Uptown Whittier. Um, we're uh, lucky enough to be able to use Four Bricks' uh, wonderful kitchen facility uh, to perform this uh, dish for you today. Um, the dish we're going to be uh, plating up is actually going to be uh, peas and uni. Um, obviously, go into more detail about it. Uh, you might be a little bored at that uh, initial. Uh, uh, an, uh, <laughs> title of the dish, but I assure you uh, it's pretty interesting and um, we're really excited to plate it up for you and to, um, explain to you our thought process behind it. Uh, number one, peas obviously hold a very special place uh, in my heart. Um, I think Claudia's got a pretty good uh, story about it too. We both came to uh, know peas on a special level uh, working for Chef Itor at Asomni and um, it um, really just sort of set the tone and the narrative for how we in, in that restaurant and in, in my development um, as, as, a, uh, as a chef understanding ingredients and appreciating them. Tell uh, me about peas. Yeah, so the peas, the Claudia uh, got a hold of some really nice peas from uh, Santa Monica's Farmer's Market. What was the farm? That's right, Wong's Family Farm. And we uh, prize them for their smaller size. Smaller is sweeter. The larger the peas, the more starch, the more dull it is, and the more mushy it gets. So we're going for the smaller ones, kind of replicating caviar, making it look luxurious with a simple ingredient. Yeah, and um, the key with that, uh, I mean, when I decided on this dish, um, number one, I knew Claudia was familiar with it. And uh, number two, uh, peas, obviously. Uh, maybe not so obvious, but obvious to me uh, that originally they were really kind of disgusting. Basically, growing up, they like, would not, could not stand seeing peas, um, and they were just mushy. You know, like so many things. You know, we all have these experiences with food that was um, unimpressive and just revolting. So, over time, I started to see, you know, when working with Chef Itor, uh, that uh, the way he treated peas, and I was like, There's, I can't even understand what, why would he like this ingredient, this and that, until I saw and taste it and um, appreciated the, the effort that went into it. Um, and actually, uh, we um, really got a lot of recognition for that uh, in the press. Uh, one of the main pictures that we have uh, floating around um, from Somni is uh, the team standing around the table shucking peas together uh, because it took that much time and it took that much effort and labor to uh, really uh, efficiently s uh, select that product. The LA Times mm -hmm. came in to shoot uh, um, some photographs of us because we were just we just opened. Um, we were like a brand new restaurant, and we were uh, a restaurant that had no servers, and all the cooks were were responsible for every step of service, um, not only preparing the food, um, cooking the food, and plating the food, but also every step of service for the customers. So we all had to wear the hat of service staff and uh, cooking staff. The front of the house and back of the house. Yeah. So we would grab this long table and maybe what, 12, 14 of us will line up and we start shucking peas, maybe a good 30 to 40 minutes, four cases of peas and we would get maybe two cups of perfect small peas for service. So um, I think that really put and engraved in us um, that the little things are important, you know? So um, I think that's what brought us here today. <laughs> Are snow peas, sorry, sugar snap peas from the Santa Monica Farmers Market, and they come from the Wong's family farms. Um, you will find them here every Wednesday in Santa Monica around 8 a.m. to about 12 or 1 p.m. You want to get the smaller ones because they're full of sugar. The larger you go on the peas, that means they've matured too long on the on the stem, and so they become starchy. So those are the ones we don't want to use. Those are perfect. I think Shane plays with like his five senses. So, um, there's a lot of sweetness that complements his the uni that he got, and a little bit from the squid. If you want to say a little bit more about yeah, that. Yeah, like the squid has a, it's like, a, 
presents that like really I think I think umami I guess is the word for it for lack of a better term um, you know the umami and the, like the, like lingering sweetness that comes from that and then you have like the grassy sort of uh, you know like grassy element from the peas and then you have um, you know like the land aspect of the peas which is like you know very much from the earth and then you have the sea which is the you know the uni which is just like through and through you know briny um, oceany uh, you know marine type flavors and and with the, the squid, the dried squid, it just kind of like brings those two to uh, to work together. You don't necessarily need the squid, um, but I think they're they're quite a band together. Um, and the uh, added element of the truffle oil, I think, just kind of is, is like the the Rick Rubin uh, producer, so to speak, that like you know gets them all singing on the same note. that you're uh, taking the time to learn a little bit more about peas. Um, so let's start off right at the top. Uh, this dish really revolves around having some fresh peas, freshly shucked in this case. Um, the idea is that uh, a lot of us are familiar with maybe some peas that are rather mushy, which was my experience uh, growing up, and which really kind of encouraged me to uh, pursue this dish because it totally changed my, my viewpoint on peas. Um, now, the, the, the balance here is with uh, the uni that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using some sea urchin. This is some Santa Barbara sea urchin, um, which is becoming more and more available. Uh, you could also you know, buy live uni uh, just down the, the street here in uh, Newport Beach, short drive, but it's worth it if you wanna wake up early. Uh, but there is uni available in uh, Korean markets like H Mart um, and some of your local uh, specialty fish uh, purveyors or fish markets. So uh, the idea with the peas is the peas kind of represent this like earthy, very, uh, um, you know, grassy, you know, notes as far as flavor. Um, and they're and texturally, we want the crunch. Um, the uni being this very briny, uh, sort of like not landlocked flavor, it's very much from the sea. So bringing those two together is really the core essence of this dish. Um, so moving on from the uni, made a little butter uh, out of the, uh, the uni pieces to uh, just reinforce that flavor in the dish. We also uh, juiced some peas. Um, we have some parsley, some uh, 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 diced green onions here. And the other little trick, um, which kind of was a little uh, surprising to me once we uh, worked through it, but it's gonna work out really great, is uh, some dried squid. It's a dried uh, and mar uh, marinated and dried uh, squid. And it just adds such a just wonderful background note, um, which you're probably going to uh, you know, appreciate more than you believe. Um, then moving on from that, we have some pea stock that we made out of the shells. A little clarified butter here to start the dish with. And then we have our uh, curated, uh, hand-selected peas uh, uh, based on their size. So, All right, so we're going to start with uh, about a tablespoon of clarified butter. Just want to get that nice and warm. And this, the, ideally, you want these onions to go slow. These are the green onions here, about two tablespoons. We're using a, an induction here so we can kind of you know control the cooking really precisely and uh, it's just my preferred method. So not as hot. No, no sweating over here, so it's not right now. So we want to just get a little bit of color and uh, translucence on the onions. Sorry, it was a gas range. Yeah, you want to just generally do this at like medium low at first. No real reason to rush it. Let the onions kind of do their thing naturally. Um, you want to sweat them. And then while these uh, these onions are sweating, 
perfect opportunity to add some of this diced dried squid, which is available, especially in, in this zip code, uh, very, very easily. Um, H Mart happens to be a, a great purveyor of dried squid, which is where we selected this uh, dried squid. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that now. This is about a, a teaspoon of dried squid. Now, the idea here is we want the squid to like release its, we've all heard about releasing the oils, we want the squid to release its oils, release those seasonings that are on the squid, so that, uh, you know, it's gonna really build that background flavor, base flavor for the, uh, for the dish here. I know you're on camera, you can't smell this, but you're really getting a lot of like, um, just strong seafood flavor. Um, not really too different than lobster, to be honest. Flavor is pretty remarkable right now. Um, turn the heat down a little bit. Always manage your heat. You want to go lower, uh, lower and longer, as opposed to you know high and fast. That's why mistakes are happening. So, and then while this guy's going, to continue this uh, flavor building. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of this here. I'd say about two teaspoons, more like of the uh, uni butter. Uni butter is simply just made by melting some uh, some butter. Sorry, not melting it, more tempering. So the tempering just means leaving out of room temperature. You want it to be totally soft. So it's uh, no resistance whatsoever. And then you want to fold in about two parts of uni, I'm um, sorry, two parts of butter to one part uni um, and season it with a little salt. So if you want some pepper, that's fine too. Um, and if you want to add a little splash of vermouth too, uh, vermouth in your seafood butters works really well also. So. Definitely don't want to add Smirnoff uh, ice, though. That's uh, not recommended. So, really getting a nice base here. So we're gonna kind of let this guy go for a little bit. Um, the idea being that you want, you know, the, the sugars to come out of the onions, because that sweetness too is gonna add a nice balance to the, uh, the briny, um, funk on the answer that comes off of the squid, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, so this one. So really, um, obviously like most things, being prepared helps um, having your onions chopped, having your, your squid chopped. Um, however, um, if you don't want to chop the squid, uh, as we just tested uh, right before, it really works just fine if you have it shredded. Mind you, you want it to be kind of thinly shredded so that it's a little bit easier to incorporate. Um, but what ends up happening is when you add some more of this uh, shredded squid, we're adding here about, I'd say a quarter cup of shredded squid. Now what's gonna happen is this shredded squid, it's gonna again fry in the oil a little bit, release some of those really nice flavors. Um, at least nice for some, dried squid's not for everybody. So if you wanna see, we're really getting some nice uh, action from the squid. And this is when we're gonna start to add our pea stock. So I'm going to start by adding about an ounce, two ounces. And so the pea stock, really easy, just made with uh, heating some uh, onions over high heat, getting its really, really dark color on the onions, almost burning them. Um, and then you uh, do the same to the pea shells. You cover them with water. You don't want to be too much water. You want to kind of just cover the product. And then what happens is uh, you want to bring that to a simmer, cover it, Pretty much let it steep uh, until you're ready to use it. Uh, strain it, um, and then you have pea stock. Season it with a little salt, and you're ready to go. So as you can see here, getting a little bit of an emulsion, somewhat, uh, from our pea stock and our, uh, our butter and our squid. So we're gonna add a little bit more of this pea stock. So now we're gonna start rocking and rolling here. Kind of start to see, you kind of judge the amount of uh, liquid that you have in there. And uh, looks like I need a little bit more liquid for the amount of peas that I have. So now this is going to be putting me on about my fifth scoop. So we're looking at about five ounces of, uh, of pea stock here. So it's a, uh, roughly half a cup, a little more than half a cup. 
So before I'm going to add my salt, I want to taste the stock because I want to make sure that I'm not going to go overboard. Because there's salt obviously in the squid, there's salt in the mini butter, and there's salt in the pea stock. So, and I really like this uh, dried squid, so I'm going to steal extra for me. Sorry. Okay. A little pepper, pinch of pepper, or about three grinds on your pepper grinder at home. Do a large pinch of parsley. Turn the heat down. It's going to be about, I'd say, a quarter teaspoon of parsley. And then, we're going to really add the peas now. All at once. Stir, stir, stir to coat. Because I already added the uni butter, I'm just gonna mount it with a little fresh butter. Now I just added a bunch of unseasoned product, so naturally I'm gonna add a little more salt as I stir this. So now we're gonna add about three finger pinch usually equates to about three grams or about an eighth of a teaspoon. Stir, stir, stir. The idea is, is we don't want too much broth. I mean, if you want more broth, feel free. But you want these peas kind of like just glazed. Now I'm gonna turn up the heat. I'm gonna cover them really quick for about 30 seconds, just to kind of heat them through basically. They're really, really supple peas, so they're going to break down very easily. We're going to finish with a little ladle of this pea juice. Pretty much going to be ready to eat it, so we'll move to plating in just a minute. Turn this up. Get some of that high heat through the peas. Okay. And we'll taste it a couple more times to make sure the seasoning is uh, where we want it. Really, really simple dish. Um, just sourcing some good product is key. Obviously, the uni and the, um, and the uh, squid are helpful. If you don't want to break, break the bank, which uni is actually more affordable than you may realize, um, dried squid is a way to go to kind of add that nuance. Um, however, uh, just peas and a healthy amount of onions and black pepper, um, a little time and a little practice can really go a long way. So, so we're starting to see some steam here. Peas are happy. Maybe get one last taste here before I add my uh, pea stock. Sorry, pea juice. Happy with that. Okay. Then we'll do two. So let's go two ounces of pea juice. A little bit of pepper. And of course, last but not least, a little truffle oil. Turn off the heat, do about, I'd say a teaspoon of truffle oil. It smells really good, I think. So, now we're gonna plate. But before we plate, the first thing we're gonna do is actually we're going to uh, a couple of these uh, uni loaves in the bottom of the bowl. The key to this is uh, you want the uni to be uh, room temperature. So kind of like leave it out of the refrigerator when you start making all your stuff ready. So that way like the idea being that um, the idea being that uh, you don't want to um, have cold uni to throw off all the temperature of your dish. Because something like uh, that temperature change can really turn a great dish to a not so great dish. So I am picking some small uh, lemon balm and this will help as garnish at the end of our plate and this will add a little bit of freshness to complement the peas so I dig down on the plant and get the smallest ones I can find and that will do so now we're gonna Finish this dish for our two top. So you got the uni at the bottom of the bowl. I'm just gonna get about two nice ladles full. 
Take three spoonfuls a piece. One of some juice. Let's do one more loaf on each one. And I'm just going to finish with just a couple of these. Um, tweezers are not essential for this dish. Um, these are just some really cute leaves that we like to uh, feature. Um, with the lemon balm, it's going to just all the all the notes in the dish going from the you know, the strong personality of the dried squid, brightness of the seafood, um, that crisp, grassy flavor of the peas, and just a little bit of that butter, lemon balm. It's gonna be uh, sit right at the table with everything. So, and if I'm not mistaken, this is gonna be your peas and uni. cooking because of my parents' divorce. So my sister and I were left to, not alone, but my father was working three jobs. My mom went back to her country, had no mom with me, so that means no dinners, no breakfast, food, or anything else that comes along with it. So I had found myself cooking a couple noodles for my sister, um, just instant food, and I just came to the point where I started going back to my childhood where we would have meals. So I decided to drop everything I wanted in high school and I decided to go to culinary school. And um, I started, that's, that's what got me to get my engine going in the culinary industry. And then after that, a couple years later, I was diagnosed with cancer and I took a break from that and it just kinda, I feel like it resetted my brain to really falling in love with the industry. And what I love about cooking is the expression on people's faces. I, like, I love the smiles, the, the laughs, even the, what the hell is this, but it's so good. I love those expressions and it's something that I found in my sister and that's why it's so dear to my heart. And therefore I see it in other people and it reminds me of my sister and her happiness. I think for me, uh I think having definitely similar with family is like obviously key to me. Um, I think I can really tie it to like a specific experience. Um, went on a uh, a trip. I think the summer of like my fifth grade year of school, and um, went to Ensenada, and we went to the. Uh, we were driving like you know down to where we were going to stay, and then we stopped at like one of the the food food courts there 
and it was just like so like it was like bustling people were like you know screaming out to come sit down at the table and like like I've never seen that before obviously and, you know and I, the sheltered American life that I had as far as um, living in you know Whittier in Los Angeles so uh, but just eating that fish taco um, was just like a literally like it was a pretty like spiritual experience just because I was like I just couldn't couldn't quite capture I still can't ca capture what was so <laughs> incredible about it but it was just and I'm still searching for that same kind of like like taco and I, I get it sometimes from time to time but that was a uh, that really kind of set the ball rolling Whittier uh, is like no question really is like burnt into my psyche number one because I'm um, a citizen of here my whole life um, I'm raising a family here um, you know, went to school here was educated here and um, you know my cooking career actually started uh, at the old uptown market in Delhi which was uh, right next to the courthouse where Sala wine is now I think so that was my first actual uh, pr well the yeah, cooking job first kitchen job was uh, dishwashing of four days at the Marie calendars by PIH I worked with the Crystal Marquis with the Art Garcia Nadi Garcia um, wonderful people naturally always had a love for flight flight I went you know to eat there when I was like in high school had like a, a party there or something like that and then was like I have to work here and you know like this was the only this was the place to work in uptown I was like I have to work there you know so then I ended up working there I think I wore every single hat there I think I made every single mistake there I think I know I made every single mistake multiple times but I also I, I no regrets about my time there as far as um, what you know what it showed me I learned a lot about the people here I think we should continue to support a mama and papa restaurants to keep moving forward I think to see a beautiful community like Whittier grow yeah I'm really really excited about you know the the expansion of of, of the outdoor dining um, especially in uptown Whittier Here's a riddle. Name a place that never charges your card. Host programs all year long. And membership is as easy as walking through the front door. Need a hint? Look up. You may not be able to judge a book by its cover, but I'd like to think you can judge a community by its library. And the Whittier Public Library is the best, with its programs for adults and children, and of course, plenty of reading material. But how do they keep offering these great programs? Let's find out. Hey, here. Welcome back, Matt. Welcome to the Whittier Public Library, home to a wide variety of programming, including author visits, lecture series, guest speakers, the Summer Reading Club, Whittier Reads, and let's not forget about the children. Come on, I want to show you something. Here at the Whittier Public Library, we host events for children of all ages. It's never too late to inspire a love of reading in children. And even dogs, too. 
these programs are all made possible thanks to donations to the Whittier Public Library Foundation by community members just like you. In fact, they can be made possible from donations by people who are you. By donating to the Whittier Public Library Foundation, you will help us adapt to the changing needs of our community, support public access to information, and most importantly, help Whittier residents of all ages. Your donation will go directly back into the library, helping fund programs, events, and ensuring we can provide what our community needs. A library is a wonderful thing. So become a part of ours today by donating to the Whittier Public Library Foundation. Myself, the library, and the entire community of Whittier thanks you. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Just put it on my card. Hi, my name is Jack Sanchez. I'm the Library Services Manager. I'm talking to you from our temporary location at the Whittier City Hall. Um, most of the administration staff is here, and um, we also have another temporary location, which is located at the Historic Depot on Greenleaf Avenue, and that location currently houses a browsing selection of the books from the Central Library while it is currently being renovated. Um, if you would like to contact the reference desk or put a book on hold and pick it up with the curbside holds pickup service, you can do that there. Or if you'd like to browse at the the Whitwood Branch Library, we're currently open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And um, for browsing or um, computer use only. And um, we hope to see you there at the library. Uh, on behalf of the staff, I'd like to thank you for purchasing the What's Cooking series from the Whittier Public Library Foundation. That will go toward the campaign for renovating the Central Library. And we're all looking forward to that project uh, completing so that we can all go back to the Central Library. But if you want to continue to cook at home and check out some of our books, I've got a few of my favorites here to share with you. So the one thing I love about cookbooks is that if you for example, if you like a recipe and you look it up on a blog online, usually you're faced with a ton of ads over at the side. So you have to go through someone's life story about how they came up with this recipe. And then you have ad after ad after ad until you scroll all the way down for the recipe. With cookbooks, you don't have to scroll through the ads. So, um, these are just a few of the books that the library owns that you can check out. The first one is The New Persian Kitchen, and it offers a ton of really yummy dishes, including this grilled shrimp recipe. It's pretty cool. Another one is a standard book. It's kind of like a like a dictionary or an encyclopedia of, of cooking. It's called The Joy of Cooking, and this is the 75th edition. You can learn all about potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. And here is a really interesting recipe where they use heavy cream or orange juice, tangerine, or fresh lemon juice. And they say if desired seasonally, you can add any of the following, chopped pineapples. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, 
pecans, ginger, brown sugar, bourbon. So, oh, these are for sweet potatoes. That makes more sense. So if you're interested in learning all about potatoes or any other kind of dish, the joy of cooking has almost every, every kind of meal that you can think of. The only thing it absolutely does not have are pictures. So if there was a picture, maybe I'd know that we were talking about sweet potatoes. Another book is um, from a Master Chef um, contestant. She was in season six. Her name is Claudia, and she lives in La Mesa, California. Her book is called Claudia's Cocina, A Taste of Mexico, and it features delicious meals that are traditional and um, some that have been modified for different palates. So, for example, here is corn dumplings in pinto bean cream. Looks delicious. I think I'm going to try that tonight. And lastly, one of my favorites is Giada De Laurentiis, Happy Cooking. She's got some recipes in here that are so mouth-watering when you look at the picture. You just want to go home and try them. For example, I guess I'm all about shrimp today because this shrimp looks so delicious. And last but not least, Julia Child's book, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. You can also rent Julia versus Julia while you're reading this book. So that's an option. So lastly, thank you so much again for contributing to the Whittier Public Library Foundation. I look forward to talking to you, whether it's at reference or um, if you'd like to stop by the Whitwood Branch Library. We're open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can give us a call and you can use our curbside service if, if you'd like. Um, and thanks for watching. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Paymani Maxidi. I'm the Director of Library Services for City of Whittier. Thank you for participating in our What's Cooking series uh, and thank you for um, supporting our library foundation in their efforts to help our central library renovation remodeling. But I'm sure you're all waiting for to see who is going to be the winner for our uh, certificate to all these wonderful restaurants that it's that you all have been watching all these weeks. Drum roll, please. Okay, the first winner is Van Priest. Second one is Pat Big. Our third winner is Larry Kirschenbaum. The fourth winner is Bill Geiger. And the final winner is Darlene Shear or Chire, I hope I said the name right. But for all of you guys, uh, all the winners, we will contact you so we can either send the certificate to you or you can come and pick them up here. Thank you again for participating in this series and supporting the Whittier Public Library Foundation.